Okay, folks. Um, we've we've been working on these this box, and the next step is to uh, see the pencils in the box. There's a lot of pencils in here. I'm going to measure how thick I want that little shelf on each side to be, and then how thick it needs to be on the end here in order to fit all these pencils in there. And this is the piece of wood that I've come up with. It was, uh, I did a video yesterday that I'll include in here uh, just after this introduction. I did it with my iPhone. I show on how we used a sled on the bandsaw because this board was rough on both sides and, and, and wouldn't have been safe to run through the table saw. So I needed one good straight edge off that bandsaw and we were able to do that. Okay, we're going to cut a board that's crooked on both sides. I need a straight edge on one of these sides right here. So you can see that side's definitely not straight and this side's definitely not straight. But I need to cut a piece of wood out of here and I gotta put it on the table saw and run it by there. And if you look at what it's doing on the table saw, uh, I mean, it is not touching the table saw. There. And of course it isn't touching it here. Everything about that is would be dangerous. I've got to cut a straight edge, and the only way to do that is do it on that bandsaw over there. But I need a, a track for that bandsaw to run in. So this is what I'm going to get right now. And yeah, I got that focused just right. So I've got this, this is my little ladder I made. Uh, it's handy to pick up. It's lightweight uh, and I can climb all the way up to the top step as long as I'm hanging on to something. So here goes. See, I'm hanging on to something. Hanging on still. I can reach up here and step on the top step. I feel perfectly safe. And this, I store stuff in here I don't use very often. But then I just take this and I put it down here so I don't have to worry about holding it to get that down off this ladder. And I'm still holding on to it. And now I can come down and hold on to this, steady myself, and come all the way down. And that ladder does the trick. So this is a little uh, track that runs on this uh, bandsaw over here. Let me show you over here. All right, so there's the bandsaw. I'm, this thing goes on here like this, but I'm gonna show you from over here if I can. So let's see, yeah, you see that bandsaw. So it's got a little, you can see the hole here and a thing to, to, to tighten down with. This rides in that hole in the bar right there. And then I can, I can tighten it down just like that. And you don't go anywhere, but it's a track that I can run in. And I think under here, and here it is, here it is. Here's a track that I've built that'll run directly in here. Uh, I gotta remember how it goes. some channels on top here. These are uh, uh, dovetail grooves and I've got some dovetail clamps. Uh, I guess that's what they call them. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna go get some clamps so I can clamp that piece of wood down under here. And here they are. So these are the dovetail clamps this goes in there, but you know what? That's not a rub tip on that. Hang on. It ought to be. It's very close, but it's not exactly a dub tip clamp. This one's specifically made for, uh, for this type of cut. 
And you can see it slides in there, but it won't come out. And uh, this one slides in here like this. And I can clamp that board down in one spot on top of here. And then I'll be able to, uh, I, can, I can move this forward, get up close to the saw blade, and get, get it up close like this to that saw blade. And I'll cut a straight edge on there once I get this clamp down. So I'm going to put it kind of centered where I think, think it, it'll fit all the way, tighten the clamps. I need to tighten down here, tighten the clamp. All right, now this comes off of here, and you can see the tracks down below there, and you can see that board is clamped, and when I cut that, that down that band saw, I can get, I gotta move the board closer to the blade in order for this to, uh, to work. Otherwise, I'll be cutting into the, uh, into the aluminum track. I'm going to pull the aluminum track back some, then move the board, loosen two clamps up, and move the board closer. That looks pretty good right there. I think it'll cut all the way. Tighten the clamps back up. And now I can bring this all the way back. What am I hitting? Oh, I'm hitting some of this. My hands are right here. I can never bring this wood all the way back. If I have to, I can, this is on wheels, I can pull it out, but I don't think I need to in this particular case. Now I can slide this whole fence backwards a little bit. And let me get a little bit closer here so you can see what's going on. I wonder if that's that's got to be seeing it. Right there, that's precariously positioned right there, but maybe it'll stay. Put this right here and turn this. I'm getting a new tripod for Christmas just for this purpose so I can aim it better. So that's, that's aiming right down about right here. You should be able to see this blade and I can't look at the camera, so I'm just hoping I get this shot. You should see this blade will touch this piece of wood as it comes through there. And so I'm going to turn some light onto the situation so you can see me doing this. And, that, and so I turn it on. I gotta get the dust, the dust collectors hooked up here. I gotta go over to the other side and switch the saw from the dust collector to the bandsaw. The dust collector. The bandsaw is the one that goes over that uh, top, through that pipe. I just pointed to it and I know you can't see that. So I hope you can hear me. But anyway, I gotta see if this thing's recording. Yeah, it's recording. I would hate to have done this and not been recording. Okay, so this is gonna slide and give me a straight cut on this bandsaw as soon as I tighten down on this. So this will slide and give me a straight cut on this bandsaw. I may have to push it a little bit closer, uh, but, but I want to get as close as I can. It's hard for me to tell exactly where that straight edge is going to go until I start cutting. But, ear protection. The bandsaw is actually not that loud. It's certainly not as loud as a table saw or a joiner. But here we go. Uh, bandsaw on. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's a, a rough blade, but that doesn't matter about the table saw because it, it, it'll make the smooth cut as long as the board is sh straight, you know, within, uh, you can have bumps as big as this bandsaw bumps is. These will be maybe a uh, one to one twenty eighth of an inch type bumps there, which won't matter whatsoever. But I was going to say that this bandsaw is a fairly safe tool. As a matter of fact, my dad used to, uh, when I was a kid, used to let me use the bandsaw to cut out swords so we could have sword fights. And we would take a piece of board and we would cut a handle and, and a couple little, you know, uh, things to, to protect it. And the sword comes out and it comes to a point. And uh, man, we just have sword fights and everything. We didn't stab each other. Nobody got hurt or anything like that. And uh, my dad let me do that, which is hard to believe. So, now we can come over here. I don't do everything on the iPhone, but uh, uh, what I'm trying to do is something quickly and not setting up these other cameras. And I think it's gonna be a fairly short video. I'll do it on the iPhone. I can't, I shouldn't wax philosophical here or uh, pontificate as I was saying. See how straight that is on there? That's gonna be just fine. Now, what I wanna do is make sure that it cuts every bit of that material off of there and leaves me with a much smoother straight edge on that side. Now, this is where it's gonna get loud. I'll, I'll turn the volume down on the, uh, in the edit stage of this thing. All right. Uh, I gotta switch the dust collector back to the table saw. True board. This is smooth as it can be. This is rough. So what I'll do now is turn it around. So this one, you can see slight little gaps in there uh, because of that bandsaw blade being such a rough cut. You can see the rough cut on there from the light uh, and so forth. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is cut that rough edge off, move the fence over just a tad bit and cut that rough edge off. And then I'll have a piece of lumber. It's already been plain smooth. I'll have a piece of lumber that I can uh, cut to uh, do things. By the way, the purpose of this uh, piece of wood is to put inside the, the box, the Christmas box, and I need to cut a 3 8 inch piece of wood and two little shelves on each side of the box on the ends. And we talked about that in a previous video, but that's, that's what I'm working on. I'll, I'll switch to all the other cameras when I get ready to glue those things in. So here goes. my hand on this table saw. I had my fingers pushing the board through here. I was holding with these three fingers, which are, are an inch or inch and a half away from the blade. And I got this finger locked into the side of the fence just so that if that board were to, to flash loose, I, I'm not, 
I'm not coming away from that fence right there. I'm not going to cut a finger off. Of course, the good thing about this saw stop saw is if the slightest bit of flesh touches this blade, that blade drops out of sight within a few milliseconds, stops turning, and not even a scratch. So uh, this is a safe tool, uh, except for kickbacks. If you're standing behind something kicks back and hits you right there, that's the rough thing. See, I'm being pontifical now. So uh, let me turn this video off and we'll show you the rest later. And so that's, that's where we are with this piece of wood. I am gonna have to reduce the thickness and I'll just do that on the table saw here of this piece of wood uh, in order to make it small enough to, to fit this box. Uh, that much room right there has to be cut in half and put on both ends and then a little bit of extra space for the pencils to kind of move back and forth. Uh, but here is the technique that I'm going to use to measure uh, how thick I want this. We decided yesterday that uh, I decided yesterday we, that we wanted uh, to have enough room, the height of that thing to be enough to hold two sets of pencils. And so looking at this, that is right at uh, 9 sixteenths of an inch. I'm going to bump that up to 5 eighths of an inch. So the thickness, uh, that'll give it an eighth of an inch clearance and you'll be able to put more pencils or thicker things in there or whatever you want uh, for the, uh, the inside of that thing. And uh, so 5 eighths is what we'll do. I'll, I can just set a table saw on that to, to get that 5 eighths. But I've got, that's, that's the thickness of, that's actually the height of it is 5 eighths. So the height is 5 eighths. This thickness is a half inch and we've only got, um, let's see, how can I measure that? Uh, let me get a piece of square wood that'll bring it up to the top that I can measure against. These little blocks of wood come in handy all the time. So, and it's perfectly square. So I, what I'm going to do is set it at the end of the pencil. I don't know whether you can see that on the uh, GoPro or not, but I must... I'm going to set it so that it's at the end of the pencil. The pencil's touching over here. And so now I can just simply measure this distance, right? End of the wood. This distance right here. And that is 11 sixteenths in half would make it... Uh, uh, well, if it was 10 sixteenths, it would be 5 sixteenths. And so I might as well do that because that, that gives a little bit of clearance, at least a, a 32nd of an inch clearance. So five, maybe a hair under 5 sixteenths is what I want um, to do that. So a hair under 5 sixteenths thickness for this wood. So 5 eighths in this dimension uh, the, the thickness is going to be 5 sixteenths and uh, the width I'm going to have to measure that box. I'm going to remove these pencils now so that I can get my measuring tool down in there and you as you've figured out by now I rarely use a tape measure to measure anything. I always use some sort of the two stick method basically, but we're a little more modern than that in that we're using a, a little device that represents the two sticks. And this is uh, now the, the width of that piece. So this piece is gonna get cut to that width and 5 sixteenths thickness. And um, the length, oh, the, the, all right, that's the length. So I need to, this is the length now, 
but we're going back and forth and the height is going to be five eighths uh, is what we said. So let's cut, since we don't need this whole piece, uh, I might as well only make the thin part, the part that I need to get across there. And I'm going to give myself enough room to have enough, have enough uh, room to hold on to this piece. I'm just going to cut this, this piece off right here with the uh, miter gauge. I notice that it's not square on the ends. So I'll square it off first and then cut it off. Right now, the, the, the exact length doesn't matter. We'll make sure this catches that blade. The blade's high enough. That does catch that blade. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to cross cut the end of this piece off of there first. Hearing protection on. Uh, yep, the dust collector is hooked up right. Dust collector and saw. So we've got a good square edge on this thing. I'm gonna move this fence over. So I'm gonna make the off cut about this long. Uh, and that'll give me something nice to hold on to, but leave me a good piece of wood left to uh, do whatever other project. Uh, scrap pieces of wood are always handy to have. So uh, that ought to give me enough to do well, you know what? It needs to be able to do both sides. So that would be one side to right there. And this would be the other side to right there. And I know I could cut it twice, but I'm just going to do it like this. Uh, this piece goes in the scrap pile. Look at that nice spalting on the end. Big old knot on the corner here. Spalting on the other side. Nice red, fresh red oak right there. And uh, we'll start cutting this one up. So I don't think I need this miter gauge anymore. I got a place for it down up under the saw here. And... What we're going to do now is measure that 5 sixteenths, and I think I can just measure it directly on this tape right here. So there's a quarter of an inch. We had a sixteenth uh, of an inch to that. And that's 5 sixteenths, and I'm going to run this blade up pretty high because this is like a resawing operation. And that's almost halfway. I want to make sure I go more than halfway because I'm just going to cut the whole thing off. I'm going to run it like this and then flip it over and run it again like that. And the whole thing will be 5 16th at that point. I do need to make sure that uh, blade is square to the table uh, because of what can happen if, if, if it's not, they won't, it won't meet in the middle and there shouldn't be any light coming in and there actually is. It's coming in on the bottom side so I've got to loosen up this Yeah, no light. 
tighten it down. And bring this back up. Okay, I think we're we're good to cut this thing. And since this face is not going to get cut, I can use this as a gauge, but as I get into the cut, I'm going to put most of the pressure on the back side. And then once this thing gets close to being cut off, I'm just going to not use this at all and finish with pushing it forward. So I'm holding on to this, but I've got my fingers up against this fence. And uh, so the blade is going to be buried inside this piece of wood all the way around. Uh, but it can still kick back if, you know, if, if I lose control or whatever. So I've got complete control over this piece of wood as it goes through here. So, saw on. Dust collection on. So would it would be good for something else, maybe a lid liner or something like that. And it's flush. I mean, I can feel a, I mean, the minorest of, of uh, difference in there, but basically that's good. There's where the saw blade burned again, so I can sand that down. This is going to be the thickness as it goes down. There's plenty of room for the pencils in there. And we wanted it. Uh, if you didn't hear any of that because of the, this is, there's a slight little bump right there, but that'll, I think I can run it through the planer and take that off, uh, of this. And I'm going to cut this to length and, and, uh, five eighths off of it because that'll be the height of it. And I'm going to set that down here as well because this tape is accurate on here. Uh, and I don't need the blade that high. And so there that goes. This will rip that off. Then I can cross cut it to length to fit both those. And then we're going to super glue this thing in there. And uh, that'll be that part of it. Thank you. These really become sacrificial pieces. Once once they get all beaten up, you just make another. I've got patterns. these things become uh, sacrificial pieces because they get all cut up and eventually once it's just so uh, eaten up with saw blade curves and so forth you just make another one uh, make another I make four at a time I've got a pattern that, that I do with that for those blocks but there's there's the block I just need to cut it to the width, width I need right here 
that's already been done on this on one side so we'll figure out whichever side this fits I'm going to push this up against that hard fence right there lay this on top and I want to disturb the length of it and then I'm going to take a knife mark turn that fan off I mean that heater off I need to take a a good sharp knife this is the knife I use mostly for uh, marking wood um, I've got other knives I just I, I happen to like this thing uh, so I'm gonna make sure that that's tied up against there and this wood is also tight Alright, you see the tiny little knife mark? I'll cut that, uh, 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 I'll use a square to mark that knife all the way across. And what you do is you put your knife back in the knife mark, run your square up to it. So now that now it's touching, so now you know it'll be in the perfect spot for it to come through. And I just need that much of a of a uh, a little edge right there, and uh, it's amazing how many tools you get laid out during the process of this. This thing is going to get cut on the uh, on the miter saw over here. I need the light to be able to see that mark and I really can't oh yeah I can't from this side over here so the tooth the good piece will be on the right hand side the off cut so to speak so I really need my light on the other side to be able to see this thing right Now, if it doesn't fit straight away, which it does, it's actually a tad bit loose, but that, maybe it goes on the other side here. Yes, it does. That's, this is where it goes. This is what I mean about these boxes being slightly out of square. There are flaws that you make. And so this is the way the uh, that's going to look in here. It's just a ledge, and that 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 uh, slide out tray will sit on that, and the pencils will sit between these two blocks of wood. And I'm going to glue I'm going to glue the saw mark part side against the wall here. That way, I don't have to worry about sanding it or planing it down and getting rid of it. And there's two little things I thought about this. This inside wood here already has finish on it. That's why I can't use regular white glue on this thing. And uh, I'm going to use super glue, but I'm going to I'm going to drill a tiny little dent in this wood down here and also in this so that that'll hold some super glue and that'll just give it a little bit more strength because it'll have some some raw wood that that super glue is attaching to on both pieces and uh, the dent doesn't need to be big at all so I'm just getting a drill bit right here to do this that's too long I could go at an angle but let me show you a trick uh, this whole chuck comes off of here And I've got this right angle attachment that goes on there. And then the chuck then goes on the right angle attachment.
Whoa, I never did tighten that chuck. So now, now, now I can get this drill right down here where I want it. What I don't want to do is drill all the way through that piece of wood, obviously. And if you can see that little indentation there, that's where a dollop of the... Uh, the glue will go and uh, I'm gonna do the same thing on this dark side right here so I don't know whether they're gonna end up in the same spot or not it really doesn't matter because there'll be a layer of the plastic so to speak all the way across that and I'm gonna break that bit here if I don't watch that that thing gets top heavy when you do this. So this piece is ready to go in there and get glued. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll glue the other one off camera. Let me get my little super glue caddy here. All right, so this is my 2P10 adhesive. Uh, there is, this is the thin, this is the medium, this is the thick, and this is the gel. And I'm gonna use the gel, and this is the activator that you spritz on there. I'm gonna spritz the activator on, on this, um, but what I wanna make sure of those are very close. I'm gonna put the gel to get it so it goes down to the bottom and squeezes out there it goes okay so you can see the gel form of this super glue which is unusual for super glue but it's perfect for this kind of work so I'm putting the gel in I'm going all the way across with it, but I made sure I had plenty on that little indentation I put in there. Then I, and, I, and around this thing, then I spritz this piece of wood so that when it gets put down in here, it is there permanently. Well, nothing's permanent. And I hold it for just a few seconds. And what that activator does is set up immediately and it should be hard as a rock now because that's been about 10 seconds and uh, there it is I see a little bit of super glue that squeezed out on the top there and it's it's not a perfect fit I see a little gap right there that would have been solved if I had been able to use uh, white glue because I could, could have clamped it uh, with some clamps to, to pull it tight. Apparently that piece of wood's got a little bit of a curve to, to it. Let me, uh, yeah. It's, it's not a curve here. Maybe it's the, this piece of wood, it's got a little bit of curve to it. That's certainly possible. What I am gonna do is use my trusty little carbide tool to scrape away that shiny part of that. All right, that shiny part's gone now. And I need to put a little finish on that. So that'll be that'll be that. Uh, I'm gonna let that be the end of this particular 
Let me sit down so you can see my face here. I'm going to let that be the end of this particular video because it's going to be the same thing on the other side. I have not built the tray yet. Maybe I'll get to that sometime today. I sure would like to get this thing completely finished before Christmas. Um, I love how this mark works to fit that box in there and it's still an interference fit um, as it comes on there. But anyway, we will, uh, if there is another video, it'll be uh, about the uh, building the tray. And believe it or not, that's not as easy as it might, you might think it is because it needs to be just a smaller version of a box like this with a spline joint to be able to pick that tray up because I need to have some sides on that tray to hold all the objects in place as you're lifting it up uh, and I've got I got the perfect piece of oak to use as a center column to lift it up with uh, so you can get your stuff out of there all right folks thanks for watching be sure to like and subscribe and uh, share and uh, comment and uh, click that bell button to be notified of new videos that'll really help us and uh, this is another handmade little holder right here that I made just just for this uh, P210 by the way <coughs> and it all fits in there just like that it means that I am married to 2P10 at this point because and I have another this one's almost worn out because it only holds and fits these things right here so uh, there you go all right, folks, God bless you. Merry Christmas, and we'll talk to you later.